Rumba Mishnah Torah, one chapter a day, Kilaim chapter six. Halacha one. When a person sows vegetables or grain in a vineyard or maintains these species, allowing to grow one to one two hundredth, he causes the vines around it to become hallowed in a radius, not a square, of sixteen cubits. We consider the entire circle with a diameter of 32 cubits as if it were filled entirely with, with vegetables. Any vine that grows in this circle becomes hallowed together with the vegetables. Any one outside the, cir any one outside the circle is not hallowed. Halakha 2. When does the above apply? When there are more than four cubits between the edge of this circle and the rows of the vines outside of it. If, however, there were exactly four cubits or less between them, we consider the circle as if it reached the row which is next to it, and it is as if the diameter of the circle is 40 cubits. We take into consideration every vine that is included in this circle that is 40 cubits in diameter, and it is hallowed. Halacha 3. When does the above apply? When one sows or maintains the different species in the midst of the vineyard. When, however, he sows the grain or vegetable outside the vineyard but, vineyard but next to it, he causes the two rows of the vines next to the different species sown to become hallowed. The hallowed portion of the vines continues over the entire length of the area sown plus four cubits on either side. A portion four cubits wide of the area sown along the entire length of the external row of the vineyard becomes hallowed. If one sows such crops next to a single vine, only a circle with a radius of six handbreadths of the area sown becomes hallowed. Halakha 4. A small vine that is less than a handbreadth long does not, does not cause the sown area to become hallowed. When does the above apply? When there are two vines planted opposite two others and another one projects as a tail. If, however, the vineyard was planted in this manner, it does become hallowed. Halakha 5. The following rules apply when there are two gardens, one above the other, and the lower one is planted as a vineyard. One should plant the upper one until he reaches within the aerial space of ten handbreadths of the vineyard, for it is forbidden to sow seeds within ten handbreadths of the aerial space of a vineyard or a vine. If the upper garden was planted as a vineyard, one should sow the lower garden until he reaches within three handbreadths of the roots of the vines. Halakha 6. When a person's field was sown with vegetables or grain and he changed his mind and, and decided to plant vines in it, he should turn, turn over the sown produce with a plough and then plant the vines. He should not plant the vines and then turn over the produce. If it was planted with vines and he changed his mind and decided to sow crops there, he should uproot the vines and then sow the crops. If he desires to merely cut off the vines until there is less than a handbreadth of them near the earth, it is permissible for him to sow the crops at this point and then uproot the remainder of the vines from the earth. Halakha 7. The following laws apply when a person extends a vine by embedding it in the earth even if he encloses it in a dried gourd that serves as a cylinder for it, or in an earthenware cylinder. If there are three handbreadths or more of earth covering it, it is permitted to sow crops of other species above it. If there was less, than, less earth than, than that upon it, it is forbidden to sow above it. It is, however, permitted to sow at its side. Halakha 8. If he extended it through hard ground, it is permitted to sow crops over it, even if there are only three fingerbreadths and not three handbreadths of earth upon it. When does, the, when does the above apply? When the base of the vine is not visible. If, however, it is visible, it is necessary to make a distinction of at least six handbreadths at either side in every direction before sowing, just as one must make such a separation from any, vine, from any one vine that was not extended in the ground, as will be explained. Halakha 9. When a person extends three vines in the ground but their bases are visible, if there are between four and eight cubits between them, they are grouped together with the other vines that are growing in the vineyard, and it is as if they were not extended in the ground. If not, they are not included among the others. If there were less than three vines, they are not included as part of the vineyard. Instead, one should separate six handbreadths on every side, and sow other crops. Halakha 11. Anyone who sows crops under branches and leaves that emerge from the vines causes the produce to be hallowed, even though the crops are several cubits away from the base of the vine. Halakha 12. When a person drapes a vine over a portion of a trellis intended for vines, he should not plant crops under the remainder of the trellis, even though there are no leaves or branches upon them. If he did plant there, since there are no crops under the shade of the vine, it is permitted. Similar laws apply, apply if he draped a vine over some branches of a tree that does not produce fruit, for example, cedars or pine. If, by contrast, he draped a vine over some of the branches of a fruit-bearing tree, it is permitted to sow under the branches of the tree where the vine was not draped. The rationale is that a person does not nullify a fruit-bearing tree to make it a trellis for a vine. 
If after produce was sown, the branches were extended and covered the produce, they should be shifted to another place. Halakha 13. When a person sows under the remainder of the trellises or under the remainder of the branches of a tree that does not produce fruit, and then the branches of the vine were extended and covered the crops, it is forbidden to maintain them or shift the branches of the vine. What should he do? He should uproot the crops. Halakha 14. When reeds are jutting out from the lattice on the surface of a trellis, but the owner does not want to jut them off, lest he destroy the trellis, he is permitted to sow crops under them. If he left them so that the branches and leaves that emerge will grow upon them, it is forbidden to sow crops under them. Halakha 15. When a branch emerges from a vine which is propped up, or from the trunk of a vine that is not propped up, we consider it as a plum it as if a plumb line is hanging from it to the earth and it is forbidden to sow under it. Similarly, if one extends a branch from one tree and not to another, it is forbidden to sow under it. Halakha 16. When a person ties a rope or rubber cord to a branch and ties the other end to a tree, he is permitted to sow crops under the rope. If he extended this rope with the intent that the branches and leaves will grow upon it, it is like a trellis and it is forbidden to sow under it.